Hi, my name is Danny, and welcome to Esoteric Moment. Today, I wanted to give you a little tour of how I've rearranged my sacred space and altar area. We are lucky enough to have a front room that's kind of a three-season room. I like to call it our solarium. Uh, it's where we keep most of our house plants and kind of garden experiments that aren't outside. And it's also where I really like to read and, of course, do my daily ritual, uh, sometimes seasonal rituals if I can't get outside. But it is a tiny space, so it's a lot to pack into one space and still be welcoming for people who want to use it during the rest of the day, like my partner or if we have friends over, that sort of thing. So I hope you like my tour and let me know in the comments below if you're lucky enough to have a whole room that you can use for sacred space or if you've just carved out a tiny little section for an altar or a meditation space. Main thing when walking into this room that you see coming from the rest of the house is all of our glorious plants and most of them honestly are thriving because my partner Brad is really great with plants but it really adds a beautiful feature to the room and a fun place where both of us get to putter around and connect to the earth. There's also this seat which I made a cover that I sewed for it. It was originally just white and I think Brad got it from Ikea. It's pretty comfortable and the cats really like it but it was looking kind of dingy and old and washing it didn't do enough so I sewed this cover for it and my meditation cushion, my Zafu, sits on it most of the time when not in use and it's very nice to sit and relax, put our feet up a little. The second seating area is actually a foldable chair that that I got when I went off to college and I am quite attached to it and it fits into this corner pretty well. And of course there is my altar space which I keep relatively simple most of the year. Sometimes I put living plants on it in the spring summertime uh, but as we're coming into harvest time I've got this dried eucalyptus there. I have a stone that has a bunch of crystal that I got from my parents farm and just candles incense and other mementos that mean a lot to my practice then I have a corner where I store a bolster for yoga my yoga mat that sort of thing now this bookcase is brand new to this space and we kind of splurged on it but I really really adore it it has glass cabinets so you can see all of the books but it keeps it protected from Sun and dust which as a librarian, I'm a little protective of my books. I don't keep all of my physical spiritual books. Some of them just aren't worth it as reference materials or I didn't enjoy enough, so I'll sell those back to a secondhand store. Or a lot of the books I'll get, especially for reviews and stuff, I do an ebook copy, which is useful because it takes up less space. I'm cutting down fewer trees and if I end up not liking it so much I don't feel guilty about it taking up bookcase space. There's also space for my oem and tarot decks, some space for my gorsi and all of my course materials from Obad and it's so so lovely to have that easily accessible in my new space. On top of this bookcase, I have a beautiful Himalayan salt lamp, which dimmer switch. It really sets the mood, especially in the evening or morning, which is when I do my daily practice. I get to display my Bodron, which I'm not an expert on, but really enjoy and use in ritual. It's nice to kind of keep it out of case and have it be a focal point. And then just some plants on the top, a nice little spider plant, which was recently transplanted. So it's, a, it's, it's getting there. On this wall, I also have a huge tapestry that Brad and I picked out, and it's very bold. I kind of love it. It's a little more bohemian than I have the rest of our home space look. The other useful part about a tapestry on the wall is I'm hoping it provides a little bit more insulation. This room does get very chilly in the winter, and while it doesn't freeze entirely, it can be difficult to want to stay out here very long. In order to make it warmer, longer, we added this tapestry and some insula board around the edges of the room. So you can get insulated board at Home Depot or something like that, different R values, and then we used a latex paint in this beautiful green color to kind of make it look prettier, and it just goes all the way around the room. We also have 
some navy blue curtains which are insulated as well so that at night in the winter we can close that down and help retain some heat and under our plants we use the same curtains to kind of hide away storage items and the cat litter so i hope you enjoyed my tour of my new sacred space I tend to be simplistic and this is the most I've really gone out to try and cultivate a space that is both sacred and mundane and works for both of us um, but is a little bit more overt about being a sacred space. I'm very pleased with the result. So if you are looking for ideas for sacred space, definitely start small and you can grow and shrink however you need. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe because I do book reviews and videos about my druid practice uh, and hopefully some more videos about garden and farm life coming up soon. Thanks for watching and as always, may you find peace in the sacred grove. If you're interested, there are also a couple videos that I think you'd really like that I've already done. This one on the left I did for a pagan perspective and it's like a music medley kind of mix mashup, which I really enjoy. And you can check out my latest book review over here as well.